Welcome everybody and thank you so much for coming to our kids class today. My name is Jenny Moeller and I am a member of the Kitsap region of the South Sound Church of Christ. Today we're going to find out how one disciple had a hard time believing that Jesus was alive. That is, until Jesus paid a special visit. We'll see that Jesus helps us believe in him just as he helped his friends believe. Let's think about who could surprise us with a visit. So I would be really surprised if my brother and his newborn baby son knocked on my door because they live thousands of miles away from me. That would be very exciting and I would probably scream and jump and be really happy. So who would, if someone showed up at your house, and surprised you, who would that be? It would be fun to get a visit from those people. The disciples didn't expect a visit from Jesus because he had died. Let's see what the Bible says about how Jesus helped them believe in him. The Bible isn't like other books, it's special. The Bible is one way God talks to us. God is here right now, ready to talk to you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for our lives and thank you so much for the Bible and that we can learn all about you and hear you talk to us through it. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to believe in you. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. We're going to start our Bible study time by listening to some sounds. As you hear them, Try and guess what's making each noise. Did you hear that? If you guessed construction noises like a hammer hitting nails or chainsaw or a drill, you actually guessed wrong. In a minute, you'll be able to see what's making these noises and you'll really have to see it to believe it. Now, what would you say if I told you a bird made all those noises? I'm gonna show you a video in a second and this video will show you a bird called a lyre bird. A lyre bird is able to perfectly imitate any sound that it has heard. It's hard to believe that a bird could sound just like a hammer hitting a nail or a chainsaw, right? In today's true Bible story, we'll explore something that was hard for Jesus's friends to believe. We'll see how Jesus helped them to believe and that Jesus helps us believe in him too. Wasn't that video of the lyrebird cool? It just amazes me that God has made creatures that can imitate sounds so perfectly. And would you have believed it if I hadn't have shown you that video? It's pretty amazing to me. So in this Bible story from Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 36, one of the ways that Jesus helped his disciples to believe in him was that he let them see him. 
So it says, while we were, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. The disciples used their sense of sight to know that Jesus was really alive. But they probably used some other senses as well. I'm going to read again in Luke 24, starting in verse 40. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat here? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Isn't that funny? I love that Jesus did that. What do you think that having a snack would have to do with believing in Jesus? <laughs> so what's your favorite thing to eat? I don't know. I think mine is ice cream. I love ice cream. <laughs> so it might not seem like a big deal that Jesus ate something. But remember, Jesus had died. Normally, once you die, you don't need food anymore. But there he was eating fish. Only people who are alive need to eat. Jesus showed his friends the wounds on his physical body. He ate food as they watched. Jesus was proving to his friends that he was alive. Jesus helped them to believe, and Jesus helps us believe too. So hopefully you can enjoy a snack later too. So far, Jesus helped the disciples believe in him by letting them see his wounds and watch him eat. But they also got to hear Jesus. I'm going to read John chapter 20 in verse 19. It says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. When Jesus came, they not only got to see him and watch him eat, but also got to hear his voice. Let's see if you can believe in something you hear. Everyone will close their eyes. When it's your turn, you'll open your eyes. Tiptoe somewhere else in the room and say the Bible point. Jesus helps us believe in him. Ready? You can pause the video and do that. How could you tell where the voice was coming from? When you heard the voices, you believed someone was there because you could hear it. That's another way Jesus proved he was really there with them. Jesus helped the disciples believe in him by letting them hear his voice. And Jesus helps us believe in him. There was one disciple. His name was Thomas. And he wasn't there when Jesus appeared. He wanted evidence that Jesus was alive too. In fact, Thomas had some doubts. Let's find out what they were. We're going to read in John verse 20 or chapter 20 verse 25. Now, or starting in 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Jesus knew that Thomas had a hard time believing that he was alive. He knew Thomas wanted to touch his wounds. So he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer, believe. Let's think about what that might've felt like. So everybody rub the palm of your hand and describe how it feels. Does it get warm? Does it feel soft and smooth? What do you think Jesus' wrist would have felt like? What would his wounded hands felt like? Maybe he would have had a scar 
or actually a scab or a hole, like what the Bible was saying, right? That would feel really different from our wrist or our hands. So would actually touching Jesus' wounds help you to believe in him? What do you think? Talk, talk to your parents about this or whoever's with you. When Jesus told Thomas he could touch his wounds, Thomas believed in Jesus. Then Jesus had a message for Thomas. So I'm going to read in chap John chapter 20, verse 29. It says, then Jesus told him, because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Why do you think, or I'm sorry, why do you believe in Jesus, even though you can't see and touch him? We saw a lot of ways Jesus helped his disciples believe in him. How does Jesus help us believe in him today? So Jesus helped his disciples believe in him. They got to see him, hear his voice, watch him eat, and even touch his wounds. We don't get to experience Jesus in the same, in such a physical way, but Jesus is alive and Jesus helps us believe in him. He gives us the Bible, answers to prayer, and loving people who can help us believe in him. Let's pray again. Jesus, we can't see you, but we can see what you do in our lives. And we thank you so much for loving us. Please help us believe in you more and more. In your name we pray. Amen. We've been learning that Jesus helps us believe in him. Because we can't see Jesus, not everyone believes in him. But there are a lot of things we can't see and yet still believe in, like gravity. Let's watch a video about a guy who doesn't believe in gravity. Hi, I'm Cammie, and I believe gravity is real. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I don't believe gravity is real. Andrew, why don't you believe in gravity? Cammie, I am glad you asked. There just simply isn't any proof that gravity is real. Hmm, well, let's see about that. Gravity is the force that attracts all objects toward the center of the Earth. It's what keeps our feet firmly on the ground. We can test it by simply dropping something. You may want to put on a hard hat. I appreciate your concern, Cammie, I really do, but I don't need a hard hat because nothing is going to be falling today because, I'll say it again, gravity isn't real. Suit yourself. We'll start small. Drop the paper clip. As you can clearly see, Gravity has caused the paper clip to fall to the ground. Hold on, hold on. This doesn't prove anything. See this? This paper clip is shiny. Everybody knows that shiny things fall with or without gravity simply because the light shines on it and reflects off the shiny surface, pushes it down. No gravity. That is the most ridiculous thing I have ever heard. But let's go ahead and drop something a lot less shiny to test your theory. Drop the water balloon! This video proves that gravity has caused the water... Whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, not cool. I am soaking wet. I could actually really use a towel right now. Oh, my. Well, well thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, it's not funny. That balloon did not fall because of gravity. That balloon fell because it has water in it. You see, water can't float because of fish. Fish float in water. So that balloon fell because it had water in it, which doesn't float because of fish. Okay, well that's one theory. I was planning on you being stubborn, so I still have two more things to drop. All right guys, go ahead and drop that. Hold on, Andrew, did you just put on a hard hat? Oh, what, this thing? No, well, I mean, yes, but not because I'm scared of whatever you're gonna drop is gonna fall, because gravity's not real, it's not gonna fall. 
I put it on because my hair was a little messed up after you rudely dropped a water balloon on it. I had to cover it up. Right. Drop the watermelon. Let me guess. The watermelon didn't fall because of gravity. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I do not sound like that. But you are right. This watermelon did not fall because of gravity. This watermelon fell because watermelons grow on the ground. This poor little thing was just trying to return to his home. I thought you'd have some wacky reason for why it wouldn't work. That's why I went ahead and brought one more thing to drop. If you'll just stand in the middle of this X. Okay. If you're so sure gravity isn't real, I'm sure you wouldn't mind if we dropped this huge TV over your head. All right, bring it in. Mm -hmm. What did you think about Andrew's reasons for not believing in gravity? Do you think Andrew changed his mind at the end? If so, what do you think convinced him? What are some things that convince you that Jesus is real? Thomas had doubts about Jesus, just as Andrew had doubts about gravity. But Jesus helped Thomas with his doubts, just like Cammie tried to help Andrew. And Jesus helps us believe in him, even though we can't see him. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Bye. Bye.
loves us more than we could know. Gonna sing it out, shout it out, everybody let it out. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I just wanna jump, jump, jump to the sky. Gonna raise my hands and wave them side to side. Shout so loud so everyone can hear. Jesus is alive. Hey. God is perfect in every way. He is worthy of all our praise. He has given so much to us. We're gonna sing it out, shout.